and also the curator of this exhibit. Hey folks, Hal Shirtliffy with Camp Constitution, and we are in beautiful Brooklyn, not New York, but Brooklyn, Connecticut, nice. at, the, oh, uh, at the Historical Museum, and we're with... Elaine Knowlton, I'm curator of the Brooklyn Historical Society, and this is a portrait of Israel Putnam that was done long after his death. Uh, it was done by a local artist at the time he was living in Canterbury, David Wagner. Uh, he specialized in doing historical scenes. He just decided this to do, to do this by himself. And a few years later, uh, he decided, uh, he was asked if perhaps he'd consider uh, donating it to the Historical Society. And he said, yes, if you have it painted, have it framed, mm -hmm. I, uh, I'll make a presentation of it to you. And he presented it to us back in the 90s, I guess it was. Oh, so it's pretty he painted, recent then. He painted it in 1975, and 1991 he presented it to the Probably society. the anniversary of the Battle of Bunker Hill. I, and, I don't know, yeah. I don't know. But certainly, Bunker Hill is the, uh, the battle that's most closely associated with Putnam, uh, the Revolutionary War. But he had an interesting career as well. Was he French and Indian? Yes, he was in all of the battles of the French and Indian yeah. War. And he was a, a ranger. Fact, Rogers Rangers. Yeah, Rogers yeah. Rangers. And in fact, we have a little uh, flag, if you will, on the uh, monument that was placed there a few years ago by the Ranger group. And he was really a, uh, a, a farmer soldier. Yes, he much was. Much like General Stark of New Hampshire. Since Cincinnatus. You know, he was the, the embodiment of the Roman idea of, mm -hmm. the, of the farmer soldier. His farm is still extant, although. It, the Put so-called Putnam Farm is the farmhouse you see here. Only, however, only the uh, right-hand side of it, the eastern portion, was actually what he built. No, is that privately owned? The privately privately owned, owned, yes. Yeah. But it's still a historical property. It's on the National Register, and I think it uh, has nine acres, 11 acres, something like that. He had an excess of uh, 500 acres, actually. With, when he received his uh, patrimony from his father's estate when he was 21 years old, uh, he decided that he would use, it was a considerable amount of money, his family was rather well off, he would decide he would use it to buy land not uh, near where he lived. He lived in, uh, in, in modern day Danvers. It was then called uh, uh, Salem Village. They this would be Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah. They distinguished it from Salem, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. which still exists today, and call themselves Salem Village because of the witch trials. And uh, part of the, of the Putnam family was involved in the witch trials mm. and guilty of uh, such things. Uh, however, the Israel Putnam's line, uh, their, his ancestors were opposed to the witch trials. Mm -hmm. So we can forgive him, I guess, for that. His, uh, company, uh, co his uh, family involvement. The uh, marker that's just off the road from here, on the yeah, I saw that, yeah. 169, that's actually pointing you to his land, mm -hmm. over 500 acres, and uh, to his first house, which is not the one that's extant. The first house was, uh, was torn down, oh, I don't know, probably uh, sometime in the early 20th century, probably. Uh, but uh, it was probably, according to the historians, uh, just a one room over another room, mm -hmm. sort of very loft kind modest, of thing, yeah. very, 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 uh, very simple dwelling. And he prepared that for his wife and infant son, Israel Jr. And they came here at all times in February. <laughs> Tough time to come to <laughs> that's, uh, that's settle right. a new home. And what he was coming to was uh, 500 plus acres of unimproved land. And he worked very hard. He was able to uh, pay off the uh, the entire sum, including pay pay off his uh, his brother-in-law's part and took part in it. When his brother-in-law decided he was not going to move from Salem Village uh, to the wilds of then called Mort Lake, actually his lands straddled what are the property uh, the town boundaries today of Pomfret and. Brooklyn, but Brooklyn did not become Brooklyn by name until 1786. Mm -hmm. Before that, it was called Mortlake. That was the settlement that was given for a number of reasons, but uh, was actually not used by the people who named it Pomp, named it to Mortlake, hoping it would be a refuge for them once the uh, king was uh, 
back on the throne in England. He came back to the throne and there was no retribution on the part of, of these, uh, the parliamentarians were not hunted down and killed and that sort of thing, so they didn't have to flee England and come here to uh, the New World. We're talking about the 1600s now. The, uh... Right. This, the, uh, Mort Lake was actually settled in 1703. Mm -hmm. 1703. And uh, one of the first things they did was to establish the old burying ground, which today we call the South Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And that's where you'll find the uh, remains of many members of the Putnam family, and also the Tyler family, to which they uh, married, and two very important families in the town of Brooklyn. And as we were discussing earlier, you'll find in the Putnam area of the grave graveyard, you will find the replica of Putnam Stone. And the original is at the State House. And the original uh, in is Hartford. at the State House. It's in a case. And there's a picture uh, of it. Because here. it was preyed upon by souvenir hunters and chipped away at what began as a rect rectangle, uh, assumed, assumed a rather strange shape to it, uh, sort of almost like a you know, candle pin bowling ball or something. And uh, not only that, it was, it was set off the ground, this so called table stone, for obvious reasons. Mm -hmm. Tabletop uh, by I think it was five courses of granite blocks, and they took the granite blocks as well. <laughs> so when the Putnam Phalanx, which is an organization, we have a, a, a lithograph here of, of the uh, founding members, it was founded in 1858, as you can see by the flag, it was founded to honor Israel Putnam. Uh, 1858, you know, we're, we're looking forward to the celebration of our centennial. There was concern that we were. We were beginning about some of our revolutionary war heroes. And so they were very serious about the, what they were doing in honoring Putnam. They looked like they're pretty serious. Yes, well, those, they those had, outfits were they, kind of they expensive. Had, they had those uniforms custom made and what they did is they borrowed a uniform that had actually been George Washington's and was being being kept in a museum situation mm -hmm. and uh, they had it copied. And so Incredible. there they are, their names are below and everything. Uh -huh. Uh, and we, if you go to uh, the internet, you can find an article in the Hartford Current from 2007 because someone wrote in and said, now, whatever happened to the Putnam Phalanx? Because for many years that they were constituted as a military unit, but they were a ceremonial military mm -hmm. unit. They never fired a weapon, mm -hmm. but, they, uh, but they answered in that article. Uh, that they were considered defunct. If, mm -hmm. The last time that they had performed uh, any of these uh, celebrations was uh, 1983. Where would their records be kept at the historical? Uh, they're, the... they're probably, they're probably, I would say the Connecticut State Library. That'd be, I yeah, guess, I'm sure. I, that, that... I really don't know that for a fact. But this is how uh, the Putnam Phalanx becomes important in the story of the, of the monument of to Israel Putnam because it was on a visit to the graveside, gravesite when they found the tombstone in such a state of depredation, if you will. Uh, so they were, and they caused a hue and cry. There were all sorts of mm -hmm. articles at the time in the local papers about this is what we found. This is a terrible desecration of, you know, one of our country's foremost revolutionary heroes. And we should do what has been talked about for quite some time, and we should uh, we should honor him properly. And finally, uh, after after enough haranguing, uh, there was a commission that was created, and they were given a ten thousand dollar budget. And, and that was a lot of money back then. Yes, wasn't it was. It? Yes, it was. And. Uh, they spent every bit of it. Most of it they spent, they spent paying for the sculptor. Mm -hmm. Yes, he, he received over $9,000, $9,075, I think it was. But anyway, they, the commission was uh, given the job, of course, of finding a place to put it, first of all. And the, because the original uh, commission stated that it was going to be at the Putnam's grave site. Mm -hmm. Well, that picture, that modern picture, makes it look as if there's a lot of room around the original site, which has the repl replica. That's not true. It really is quite crowded there. And they, when they visited the gravesite, 
the commission said, no, this, this will not do because we're going to impinge upon the rights of other, the other family people de descendants of yeah. other uh, family members and such. And uh, it's not just Putnam's there, there's Tyler's and there's others. That's the old, old section of the South Cemetery. But anyway, um, so that was their, one of their first jobs was to find where they really could put it. And their first choice of the commission was to have it on our common. We have our lovely uh, town common, town green, historic town green. And, but unlike other towns, many other towns anyway, uh, our town green is owned by the Univer Univer Unitarian Universalist Church. Oh, okay. And that's what it was at that time in the 18, late 1880s. And uh, it's still owned by that group today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and they said, no, this is going to be a state enterprise. The state's going to buy the land. We don't want them to buy land from us. We don't want them to have that kind of power. Uh, succinctly said. And so they weren't, it wasn't allowed. And so there were other suggestions made. The reason it was placed here was that this gentleman, who's shown a portrait of him, that's Thomas Smith Marler. Right there, over, right, right over the reprint there, yeah. Right, he was, uh, he was a self-made man. He uh, was from New York City and became quite uh, the financier made quite a bit of money on the gold market in his day, and uh, he had he built a, a grand home. There's a picture of it right there. It no longer exists, so we only know it through the photographs. Mm -hmm. He built finished it in 1870 in what's called the Second Empire. Second Empire, style. Yes, yes, right. Yep. Yes, very. very There's still a lot of homes of that style that uh, still exist around around New England. Right. right, but not not in Brooklyn. It's the only one in Brooklyn that. Uh, that was here, and the the only vestige we have of it is that my theory, and I'm not sure it's true, but the next door neighbor, they significantly altered their uh, their what had been built in 1829 uh, for the home of the Reverend Samuel J. May. They altered it and gave it the look of the uh, of the Second Empire. It's right. a smaller place, uh -huh. and it's not as grand and everything. But I think they were copying the neighbors up the up the hill. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Keeping up with the Jones. But anyway, uh, this gentleman happened to own all of this land, mm -hmm. the building where we're standing, uh, as well as a, a three-story building that no longer exists. It's seen in all of these photographs where you see pictures of, oh, yes, yes. of the monument. That one is particularly good because that's, that is a copy of a picture that belonged, a photograph that belonged to the Putnam Phalanx uh, from their archives for a brief period of time. Uh, they rented space, and uh, this was in 1994. They rented it for a couple of years, I guess. And we heard about it by reading an article in the New York Times. We went there. We got permission uh, to copy these photographs. So mm -hmm. we have a, quite a collection of them. They had been saved because they had been in a museum uh, in um, the western part of the state. I'm, I'm blanking on the, the town, but the. Uh, the Israel Putnam State Park mm -hmm. is where the museum was, and it's a stone building, as I understand it. I've never seen it. The only time I was at the park, it was March, and it was closed. Okay. And, was, yeah. <laughs> and um, it, uh, they, they, they were no longer active, and so things were not being taken care of, and so uh, the powers that be in Hartford took it upon themselves to, uh, I think he was the and his title and his name and everything, but he was a, a very interested young, a young man, very interested in uh, Connecticut history, and I think he had a position with the horses, with the horse guard, and so they had this museum, which was very nice because you had a chance to see artifacts dealing with Putnam. For example, the the uh, saddle that he was supposedly rode when he took off mm -hmm. uh, to him. He the Lexington alarm, as we know it, and and the plow, and the uh, the gentleman at the museum explained to us that when they found this saddle at the museum, because the museum had been closed for so long and it was this unheated, excuse me, stone building, that they had to send it away to the Smithsonian for conservation. So what you're seeing there is you're seeing it in the exhibit, 
uh, that was there for a couple of years in uh, And where is this now? Do you know farms. where this it's is? It's now, uh, it's now at the armory. This, that's where it was last I knew. That's in a case. Mm -hmm. in, in, uh, in Hartford. In Hartford. Yeah. When you walk, I think it's still there. They may have moved it. I don't know. I can't keep up with them. Hmm. But uh, for a while, it was even on uh, the internet. They had a picture of it in the case. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if that's true anymore. And that was his plow, too, huh? Yes, the plow. And this is There's actually a, a, a children's book. He amazing. actually was 57, so that's a little bit... In, Fanciful. in Acton, Massachusetts, which is just a few towns away from Concord, right. is Israel, uh, not um, Isaac Davis's plow, ah, the okay. one, and it was actually used as a, in the for the stat, the famous Minuteman statue. But oh, okay. that still that still exists, and it was the idea of the farmer leaving the plow and picking up the musket. Yeah. Right, and we have a we have a monument that was placed there to attest to that because at the time uh, that he was he and his son. Uh, Daniel, his second son Daniel, his first son Daniel died as a teenager, but anyway, his second son Daniel, they were out plowing in back of the tavern. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but Israel Putnam operated the tavern, he and his second mm -hmm. wife. And this is a replica of the sign. Oh. And it was called the General Wolf Tavern. Notice the wolf has an E on it. That, yeah. It does not, has nothing to do with the famous wolf hunt. This is uh, the general, gentleman who fought in the Battle of Quebec, Quebec and lost right. his life. That's right. Yeah. And he served with him, and this, of course, was the French and Indian War. And it has little marks in it, and it's probably a buckshot. Uh, not everyone Birdshot. liked the idea. I'm sorry? Birdshot. Birdshot, sorry. Sorry, not buckshot. Buckshot, that's what the kind of historical society said, but buckshot's too large. Birdshot, <laughs> um, not wormholes, probably birdshot. But not everyone was happy with the idea that he was uh, a British, you know, had been a British hero and such. Well, so it wasn't but, George Washington, right? No, it wasn't George Washington. But if you look into it a little further, that's what they've done at the Connecticut Historical Society. Actually, uh, he was known as a British citizen who was in favor of the colonies having quite a bit of freedom. Mm -hmm. So he really wasn't one of the uh, the staunch defenders of. We did have a lot of friends in England, you know. Uh, sure, that yeah, were very in, yes, of course. Kind of, some of them of regretted pretty quickly what happened. Right, you know, they it, lost it, us. Just as here, uh, there were people who staunchly uh, mm -hmm. defended the king, and. Uh, their lot was not a very happy one at certain, at certain times. Now you're, here in Connecticut, we had the only uh, governor of the colony who was in favor of the, uh, the revolution. Mm -hmm. the well, I know state. Massachusetts governor was not. He no. was uh, Wentworth. No, no, no the, the, other, the other 12 were not. But uh, Now, how, um, your museum, was, what are the hours of operation here at the museum? We are open seasonally. We open the Wednesday before Memorial Day weekend mm -hmm. and close the uh, Sunday of uh, Columbus Day weekend. And we're open four hours, one through five, on Wednesday and Sunday. And you have a website? No, but we are represented uh, with some information, certainly, on the Brooklyn Connecticut website. website yeah. the okay, town website. Wonder wonderful. And it's uh, just, uh, I, I enjoy these little museums because I think there's a lot more to them than some of the large museums where you have to pay us a lot of money to get in and <laughs> everything's behind glass. And I understand you got to protect that display. I don't understand that. But Well, part of the reason is that most of what you see here is copied material. Yeah. You know, just yeah. as, you know, if you want to see a wonderful collection of signs, go to the Connecticut Historical Society. Yes, which they is a wonderful. Very, yeah. very strong collection of yeah, signs. which is right there. behind the State House. Uh, but we, um, no. No, the Connecticut Historical Society is at 1 Elizabeth Street. Oh, okay, I'm thinking of, well, maybe it's the State Museum. The State Museum. Oh, okay. Right. No, this is, yeah. it's a different. No, the Connecticut Historical Society Museum. Um, they were given, as so many of these things start, they were given a large collection, mm -hmm. a personal collection. And it went into the, the Putnam one went into the collection in the uh, 1830s when the when the, the house, his house was being enlarged and such, and, uh, 
others. All right, well, thank you so much. Thank you for your time. You're quite welcome. All right. Well, folks, we're right in front of the Brooklyn, Connecticut Historical Society, and you're looking at this beautiful monument and statue commemorating Israel Putnam, referred to as Old Putt. And I'm just going to read the, um, the inscription here. It says, Sacred be this monument to the memory of Israel Putnam Esquire, Senior Major General in the Armies of the United States of America, who was born in Salem in the province of Massachusetts on the 7th day of January, A.D. 1718, and died on the 19th of May, A.D. 1790. Passenger, if thou art, art a soldier, drop a tear over the dust of a hero, whoever attentive to the lives and happiness of his men, dared to lead where any dared to follow. He was actually buried under here. He wasn't originally buried here. Uh, his grave site was somewhat desecrated by souvenir hunters that we believe and they uh, reinterred him and put him here. The original um, table stone I guess is at the State House in Hartford and here is the other side. If a patriot remember the distinguished and gallant services rendered thy country by the patriot who sleeps beneath this marble if thou art honest, generous, and worthy, render a cheerful tribute of respect to a man whose generosity was singular, whose honesty was proverbial, who raised himself to universal esteem and offices of eminent distinction by personal worth and a useful life. So that is uh, this wonderful uh, patriot who uh, was best known for his activities at Bunker Hill, although it was not a victory, it was a moral victory and the uh, British took heavy losses and he played a significant role uh, in averting uh, perhaps a real serious uh, disaster there and lots of great books about him and and uh, we do encourage you this museum as uh, Elaine just told us is only open a couple of times a week seasonal but if you're ever through here it's definitely worth a visit <laughs>